I bought the cheapest router I could find on Facebook Marketplace. Is buying a secondhand router a good idea or a big mistake? Well, let's find out together. Let's do this. Break it down now, phone, gadget, apps, it's the techie, techie guy, yeah. And welcome to another episode of Talking Tech with the Techie Guy. My name is Liron Segev, where I make tech simple. If you're into phones, gadget, apps, tips and tricks and how to, hit that subscribe button and let's get on to today's show. So the problem. Well, my Netgear died and I really needed a replacement unit, but had no more budget left to buy any more routers for this channel. I desperately needed this specific brand and well, they aren't cheap. So I devised a brilliant, complicated four-step plan. Step number one, use Facebook Marketplace to see if anyone near me is actually selling this particular router. Step number two, find the router at a decent price. Has to be at least 50 or 60% off the regular price. Step number three, buy the router, pick it up the same day. And step number four, check that it works and get back to work. What could possibly go wrong? Because I want to collect it today, I'm going to go change the radius. I don't want to drive 20 miles. I'm going to change that down to something like two. The next thing is a local pickup. Again, I don't want it shipped out. I want to change it so I can go and collect it. And here we go. We have lots and lots and lots of different options to choose from. I am looking for something that's going to appeal to me, something with a specific make, a specific model number, and I'm going to start going through each and every single one of them. When I find something, what I am looking for is a serious seller. Someone's put a picture of the device to see what kind of conditions I'm going to get it at, and then the make and model is listed here, which means I can go to the manufacturer's website and look it up. I can see that the retail price is $170. They're listing it at $40. So already, great price, and I think I'm going to get quite a bit for my money. My next thing that I do is on Netgear site is I go and look at the various functionalities. I look at the technical specs. I want to make sure that I'm not buying some very, very old router that's going to be defunct in a couple of weeks' time, something that's really going to serve me well. When I'm happy, I click on, is it still available? And send the message, let the conversation begin. Okay, you're now caught up as to why I'm in my car. In fact, she's just messaged to say it's ready. She's gonna leave it outside the door in a bag. That inspires lots of confidence. So, well, let's head over there and see what happens. I think we got it. Okay, so the first thing I do when I get a new hardware, especially in this condition, I'm gonna check the case. I wanna make sure there's no breakages, there's nothing it shows me that this has been used and abused. This one looks like in pretty good condition. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, is reset to factory default. The reason I do that is I want to make sure that the software that's on here is legit. It's a software from Netgear, software called NetGenie. I want to make sure that nobody has loaded anything dodgy on here. So resetting it for factory default, that's going to do the trick. Let's do that next. Okay, now that that's done, I've powered it up. I managed to connect my computer to it, to the default Wi-Fi. So far, things are looking good. So the next step is to connect this to my service provider. So remember, this is a combo unit, which means it's the modem and the router built in together into one unit. So the next step is to hook this up to my ISP, and then technically I should get internet. We're almost there, ready to go. Let's do that next. Okay, here's where the problem lies. So because this device wasn't given to me by my service provider, or I'm not leasing it from my service provider, well, the service provider doesn't know what this is, and therefore, you cannot just simply connect it and expect internet connectivity. So I'm on hold now with their customer services chat, and hopefully I'll be able to register this device on their network. Now, it's a fairly straightforward process, just got to deal with customer services. So let me see what happens next. 2,000 years later. So good news, I've managed to connect, I've got connectivity, and the ISP actually pushed the latest firmware update straight to the unit. Now it's important when you get your device, if your ISP doesn't do that, see if you have the ability to manually update the firmware. 
Um, and again, this is red flag number two. Not all ISPs allow you to manually update the firmware. This could be a problem. You could be stuck with a router or a modem or a combo unit like I have that simply isn't supported anymore. And now we have a problem. So a good lesson to be learned here is before you purchase, make sure that you call your ISP or look on their supported device list to make sure that this in fact is going to be supported by your service provider. I did not do that step, but note to self. So what have I learned? Number one, you've got to do your research. There are so many devices, so don't choose the cheapest. Find the ones you actually want based on your needs. Don't settle for something that's sort of kind of going to work. You will regret that decision. Lesson number two, always check the manufacturer's website. If the router is discontinued, don't get it. It means no more firmware updates. That's a big red flag. Right, lesson number three, obviously make sure that it works with your ISP. I know it seems obvious, but I'm not gonna put it out there. Number four, I saved a lot of money. The device cost $170, but I only paid 40, and that is a big win. Lesson number five, look, it can work out as it did in my case, or it can be a complete dud. Most legitimate people out there have equipment that they no longer use and is just sitting in their home doing nothing but collecting dust. Most of the time you will win by finding a great deal. However, you do have to be prepared that sometimes you will pick up a dud. Most of the time I find that people were selling their units simply because they changed service provider or they upgraded their own equipment and this is now just a spare. Would I do this again? Absolutely. And I love having an alternative option than buying brand new tech. So hopefully that helped you make a decision about your next tech purchase. Check out these tips and tricks video down here. Hit the hit below to subscribe if this is your first time here. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. And I'll see you in those videos. Let's go.